Good morning, beautiful shrimp people. In today's video, I'm going to go through things step by step to show you what to do if you have dying shrimp in your tank, right? This video is mostly for people that have bee shrimp tanks, but this can also be applied to Neocaridina. So if you want to stop your deaths, then please like and subscribe because, guys, this will literally be one of the most important videos that you ever watch on keeping shrimp, right? So let's go. Alright guys, but before we go into the how to fix all this stuff, let's look at the signs and what are the problems in the shrimp tanks in the first place, right? The, the sign that you will see when something is wrong is the obvious one. The shrimp will actually be dead, right? But I don't want you guys to get confused with one dead shrimp with uh, multiple, let's call it multiple death syndrome as an example, right? I don't want you to confuse the two because one can be entirely different from the other. They might not be linked, right? But if you have one dead shrimp, for example, in your tank, one dead shrimp a month, that is perfectly normal, right? Shrimp are like us. We all have different genetics, we all have different conditions. And yeah, they, they die just naturally like we do as well. So this is more for if you have more than one dead shrimp in your tank. For this type of scenario, as an example, you come into your room, you see one dead shrimp, right? The next day you come into your room, you see another dead shrimp. And the next day you come into your room, you see another dead shrimp. Or it could be multiple dead shrimp one day, then there's a gap, and then there's multiple dead shrimp the next day. Anything where you see this happening, where it's a pattern, this is something that you need to fix. All right, guys, now that you can identify what to visually see in a tank and, and identify the problem of, of something that you should change and what you shouldn't change, let's get on to the next step of actually explaining why this happens in your tank. Okay, guys, to understand the solution that we're going to talk about, you need to understand the problem in the tank in the first place, right? So let's start with bee shrimp first, because this is what I know the best. And uh, let's talk about the tanks in general, what it is that's actually affecting the shrimp and what's causing them to die. So in most cases with bee shrimp, the, the thing that actually causes them to die, guys, is a build up of something, right? And this something is often linked to pH, right? So when we're talking about the first steps I want you to take. This will be integral into our solution. Let's start with the soil because this is where it all happens in the beginning, right? We have, um, we add this to our tanks, we add our water, right? And in the beginning, there's an excess of nutrients in the tank, right? And this itself is enough to kill a lot of shrimp, right? So this is why you must cycle your tank. You must make sure that you balance these uh, excess nutrients out. And uh, this is where it's important to do things like water changes and stuff in the beginning because quite often these um, elements, these fertilizers, the levels will be quite high, right? And this is where you will see tons of um, algae growth and whatever else, right? And in the beginning, especially, you need to understand that if you add your shrimp too fast, like as soon as you set up the tank and put the shrimp in, and yeah, you're risking their life. So please don't do it that way. At least, at least give it some time to start to cycle to deal with the excess of stuff and yeah, your tank should be golden. This leads us on to the second part, which can be a problem, and that is over time, right, your soil's nutrients will start to be depleted, right? Then things like your microorganisms and your walls will struggle because there's less algae, your plants will start to struggle. And then if all this starts to struggle, you start to have a knock-on effect where your cycle doesn't start to work as efficiently as it did before. And then things like ammonium and ammonia start to become a problem. So this, of course, leads on to our next issue, and that is the active soils just simply don't last forever. They don't last forever, and you will start to see things like your ammonia starting to rise, and your pH starting to rise, and just in general, right, your tank will start to fail, and this is when you'll start to see dead shrimp in a bee shrimp tank. All right, guys, so now that you know the problems that are starting to happen in your shrimp tank, and you can understand them a little bit better, let's dive into... Um, how you can identify them as a problem in the first place, right? So uh, you can use test kits to measure ammonia, ammonium in your tanks. And I did to say two different words there, ammonium and ammonia. And uh, the best way to do this, guys, is just to grab yourself a test kit and measure it. The problem with a lot of these test kits is some of them are not very accurate for ammonia and ammonium specifically. But what you can do is uh, check something in your tank, which is very specific to bee shrimp keepers, and that is your pH. So that leads us on to step one. If you are a bee shrimp keeper, this step is specifically for you. If you're having a tank with lots of dying shrimp and uh, you want to try and fix it, the first thing you should be testing is your pH. 
Right, so let's do an example of this in one of my tanks just so you can see me actually doing it and then we can talk about some of the solutions. Okay, my beautiful shrimp farm, let's do a pH test on one of my tanks, right? And this is a tank I think we're going to use for this demonstration today. We're going to take approximately 5 mil and we're going to take our clean vial of water here and we are actually going to just rinse it. You should always do this first. I actually do this twice. Most of the time, but I think once is okay, sufficient. Now you want to rinse your vial like this. And then what you want to do, guys, is you want to get your little syringe or your pipette. And next, you're going to measure 5 mil exactly. Now, I'm doing this tank specifically because this is the tank that I'm having issues with right now. And we're going to put it into our little vial here, right? Like this. See this? There you go, there's our water in our little vial. And then I'm going to take my regent here, my pH regent. Now this is the one I like from Sarah because it is, uh, you only have to add a couple of drops of this and then you're able to see instant results, right? So I'm going to get a little bit closer so you guys can see. And then we test it straight away. So let's put our little drops in. We have to put four in. And we're going to give this a gentle shake like this. And what you're looking for here, guys, is the colour of the water. The colour, right? So I can see, looking at that already, that this is yellow. Which means, on my test kit here, this little thing here, if I can hold it up nicely so you can see. It's very hard to do this on camera, but you can see it's yellow. It's not orange, it's yellow. And so that means that our water is about 6 pH, which is perfectly fine. So, if you do this and your test kit shows, for example, that you have a 6.5 pH, this is at the point, guys, where, um, I was going to leave this later on in the video, where you would actually do a soil change in your tank. So let's make this very, very clear. I'm going to put this up on some kind of writing somewhere here. Right? These are the steps that you're going to take because I mentioned adding soil to the tank there. And I don't want people to get confused that that's what we're seeing already. Right? So step one is test your pH in your tank right? and see what colour the water is. If it's below 6.5 then that is good. That's a good thing. It means that your tank is still pH stable and your soil is still working. What that probably means, guys, as well is that the, the issue that you're having in your tank is either too much nutrients in the water or your tank still isn't cycled properly. If that was the case in your situation where your pH is fine, right, but you're still having the odd dead shrimp and your tank is relatively new, right, what I would do, guys, is I would do a big water change, and I mean a big one. We're going to do at least a 90% water change in the tank, right, and this will be very evident if it works for you pretty much straight away. You're going to do a big water change, guys, and then the next day you're going to look for dead shrimp. If, there's still, if you still see this pattern of dead shrimp, then you must do another 90% water changes. So that's two 90% water changes that you're going to do in the course of two days. And some of you will be saying, Mark, but won't that kill the shrimp that are in there? Well, guys, think of it this way, right? You're on a no-win situation here where you're only losing shrimp anyway, so you may as well try and fix it properly, and the strongest shrimp in your tank will survive. In general, if your pH is fine and you follow the two steps I've just mentioned there, right? So check your pH, do your big water change day one, do your big water change day two. By the time you get to day three, your tank should be good to go. Right, if you're still having dead shrimp after this, then it probably is a problem with the soil. Maybe not a good cho choice of soil in the first place. And that is something that you'll have to consider removing. Okay, shrimp farm, so let me give you an example of the, the problems that we were talking about there in one of my tanks over here. Let me take you off the stand for a second. And let's have a little look at this tank here. Now this tank is a Tropica Master Soil Tank. And as you can see here, guys, it just has a lot of fluff, fluffy algae that is, yeah, it's never really went away. And you can see that there's a little bit of detritus and stuff in the bottom, right? This tank is struggling to take off, right? And I think it could be with an excess of nutrients. You could just see all the excessive stuff there, right? That's not what a tank should look like. Your, your tank should be cleaner like this. It should have a lot of biofilm and stuff in the walls. Your plant matter should be doing better like this. This could also be why this tank is not 
really taken off so well is because the plants are maybe a little bit too grow, slow growing. So we have to remove a lot of our nutrients, right? So I have to reiterate here that there's no dead shrimp in this tank, but not really a lot is happening. So we're going to kick start it a little bit. We tested the pH and it was fine. So the next step here, guys, would be to do a bigger water change, right? So we're actually going to do a good, good water change all the way down here. I'm going to use a siphon and we're going to suck up all this muck here that's in the bottom as well. And uh, we'll fill it back up. I'll try and get some of the soft hair algae off the sides too. And uh, we'll see how we go with this. All right, guys, let's start by sucking up some of this waste here. On the bottom, I've started my siphon. Let's get right into the corners. Hopefully we don't suck up these leaves. And this is a good start here. Right? You want to clean the area in the front like this. Let's see if these leaves get out of the way. And don't worry, guys, if I suck up anything that I'm not meant to here, I will all check the... I'll check the stuff before we are done. And yeah, my thing is getting a wee bit blocked here. Oh, there goes a snail. So our front is very clean now. Right, let's see, we can start to suck off some of this stuff at the sides. That side did so wrong. Get some of this lovely stringy algae. The tank is looking better already and we've only removed not even one bucket of water. Let's see if I can go above here and suck off some of this stuff here. There's shrimp there. You baby bambushka. Yeah. So just doing this will help this tank greatly. Right, let me change the bucket and we'll come back. Alright, let's take our water level down even further. Start the siphon again. get all this rubbish that's floating around in the water column sucking all that soft stuff off the sides Let's see if I can get any from the back here if I can reach uh, there's a lot of mulm in this already so it's probably in the case of this tank just been an excess of nutrients guys it's probably why this tank has struggled just a little bit right, so this step here will help us greatly, yeah. I can see there's a lot of mulm in here. For a new tank, it was uh, kind of full already. Let's uh, get this down even further, like so. And don't worry, guys, this will do no harm to the shrimp that's already in here. Alright, I would say that's probably about 90%. Right, let's get our new water back in. I might clean that glass first because it's very dirty. Alright, let's give this glass a quick clean. And the glass is very green here, so... Yeah, it's a good indicator that, yeah, this tank is just very nutrient rich. Alright guys, so let's add in our water. Turn on my little pump. And I'm going to put this in just at a random speed like this, this is more than fast enough. As long as I'm not disturbing the soil too much, this is good to go. Right guys, so this tank is starting to look a little bit more like a shrimp tank that we want to keep our shrimp in, instead of being a tangled mess of uh, stringy mass of rubbish. Right, so, as you can see, this uh, tank should be much cleaner from now on in, and it should also help with our nutrient overload that's probably happening in this tank. So that was stage one of how to recover a tank that has excess nutrients in it if your pH is okay. If your pH is not okay guys, unfortunately the only thing you can really do here is change the soil out. So for that you should look at something like um, going with a minimal setup or something like uh, using an under gravel filter box as an example because these are two methods that are very very easy to change out. So that is stage one of our recovery and that is do a big water change, right? And yeah, guys, it, it, we've always been taught that doing massive water changes can be detrimental to shrimp. Well, if your parameters match that go into the tank as close as possible, the temperature, GH, KH, that doesn't seem to be a problem. If you came back and your shrimp are all good, right, what I would do, guys, is just keep an eye on your feeding because all these little things that you do, like adding extra food in, these can all be contributing factors into why your tank has failed in the first place. So at this point, if your tank is still struggling, right, you've done your big 
first big water change and your tank is still, still struggling the next day, you're still having dead shrimp, then do another big water change, another 90% water change. And remember guys, this big water change is there, these are only there if your pH has uh, still been stable all this time. If it has risen, then that's a different problem altogether. So as you can see guys, using pH as an indicator to test your tank to see if it's still actually able to uh, provide the correct environment for your bee shrimp is uh, actually really easy to do. You just test your water and then you're able to do your water changes accordingly. And uh, if, it's, if it is the pH, if it is went too high, you need to change the soil. This will solve all of your issues. And the, guys, the, the thing that I had a problem with, with doing this was, um, I wanted to make this video all last week and um, I couldn't find a tank to do it in because I'd moved house here less than probably, what, two months ago. And I basically did a bigger water change in all my tanks. And I had tanks that are failing, like, so you can see here, you see this tank. If you go back to my old videos, you can see, I'll go over here so you can see what I mean here, is that the red uh, stickers used to be on here. Now, they're now green. And the reason that they're now green, guys, is because I tested the pH and the pH was fine. Now, that's the, the main thing that you want to find in a beach room tank is the pH is still fine. Right, and I didn't want to do the bigger water changes in these tanks specifically because I had baby shrimp in them. So the, what I did in the beginning, when I moved here, did bigger water changes, it has actually worked. These tanks were failing before. I have not changed the substrate. The pH is good, it's still holding the pH down. So it just goes to show, don't give up on a tank if the pH is still good. So you get bad and you get good soils, right? And it's just something that you have to test through for yourself. Or you watch channels like this on YouTube and you can see which soils work, right? So you can tell guys from my experience, the ones that I keep on going back to because they work is Akadama, this uh, orangey soil here, it's a good soil, and ADA Amazonia, right? V1 or V2, both of them work, right? And as you can tell guys as well, I like to test other soils too across my shrimp room just to see what works. All right guys as well, I think this is probably something that we should consider possibly doing more often, right? Before I moved here guys, I never used to do such a big water change like this in my tanks and I can see a real benefit from it in, in, the, in the it cleans your excess of junk and nutrients and waste out of the tank. It could be hormones, anything out of the tank and you're replacing it with good clean fresh water. And yeah, I can't see why we couldn't do this every month or two to just, you know, spice up our tank a little bit, refresh it, get your shrimp into better condition and yeah, it seems to work. You have cherry shrimp, uh, blue dreams, whatever else. Um, you can do this type of water change much, much more frequently than you think you can. Right in my tanks back here, I sometimes, guys, I do like 50% water changes every single week. Right, so if you're having a lot of deaths in a neocaridina tank, what it probably is is buildup of um, organics in the substrate that you need to flush out. Right, so you can use a, a gravel vac and you can gravel out. If you have loads of babies. Just do what I said before, do a bigger water change and refill and see how you get on. If you still have more dead shrimp, do a bigger water change and refill. And guys, remember when I'm telling you to do this to make sure that your water is always matching from the water that goes from your containers, your tap, into the tank. Make sure you use the declonators, make sure that you use aged water as well and all this stuff will help you a ton. Let's have a little list of our channel members here that support me through all these crazy shrimp shenanigans that we do. If you've enjoyed today's video, then please leave a like and subscribe. And guys, maybe watch another. I don't know which side it's on because I always get it wrong, right? So let's point to both sides. I'll see you in the next one.